Our Gospel reading today is from the Gospel of John. It's the first chapter, it's the 6th to the 8th verse, and then the 19th to the 28th verse. So here with me now the Word of God. Well, there was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. And this is the testimony of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Well, who are you? He confessed. He did not deny, but he confessed, I am not the Christ. They asked him, What well, then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. They said to him then, Well, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Then why are you baptizing, if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one whom you do not know, even he who comes after me, the thong of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. Now this place took place in Bethany beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing. God's blessings be on the reading of this most holy word. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be always in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Well, who was this John came to testify to the light? It was John the Baptist, a locust-eating ascetic and a rugged man of faith who focused his life on three main passions. First, to be God's servant. Secondly, to spread justice through his homeland. And thirdly, he came to witness the light of God broken forth in the presence of Jesus Christ. Now, we as Christians in the 21st century continue we do this task of testifying to the light that John so firmly believed was the light of God. So I'm going to share with you a story that Sandy Scapatolo gave me. She sent me this wonderful story this week. When I read it, I just had to share it with you. It's worth it repeating an ex excellent sample of sharing this light. There were two Americans who were invited by the Russian Department of Education to teach morals and ethics in their prisons, at their businesses, fire and police departments, and even at a large orphanage. So they went as witnesses to the light, like John the Baptist, and they started at an orphanage of a hundred abandoned and abused children to share the light of God in Christ's birth with those who had never heard the story. They write, we told them about Mary and Joseph arriving in Bethlehem. Finding no room in the inn, the couple went to a stable where the baby Jesus was born, and he was placed in a manger. Throughout the story, the children and the orphanage staff sat in amazement as they listened. Some sat on the edges of their stools, trying to grasp every word. Well, completing the story, we gave the children three small pieces of cardboard to make a crude manger. Each child was given a small uh, paper square. It was cut from yellow napkins that I had brought with me. There was no colored paper available in the city. Following instructions, the children tore the paper and carefully laid little strips in the manger for straw. They had small squares of flannel that had been cut from an old worn out nightgown an American lady was throwing away as she left Russia. And they used it as a baby's blanket. There was a doll-like baby was cut from tan felt, which they had brought with them from the United States. He continues, the orphans were busy assembling their mangers as I walked among them to see if they needed any help. All went well until I got to one table and this little boy named Misha 
sat, he was six years old, and he had finished his project. And as I looked at the little boy's manger, I was startled to see not one, but two babies in the manger. Quickly, I called for the translator to ask the lad why there were two babies in the manger. Crossing his arms in front of him and looking at his completed manger scene, Misha related the happenings accurately until he came to the part where Mary put the baby Jesus in the manger. And he said, and when Mary laid the baby in the manger, Jesus looked at me and asked me if I had a place to stay. I told him I have no mama, I have no papa. So I don't have any place to stay. Then Jesus told me I could stay with him. But I told him I couldn't because I didn't have a gift to give him like everybody else did. But I wanted to stay with Jesus so much, so I thought about what I had that maybe I could use for a gift. I thought maybe if I kept Jesus warm, that would be a good gift. So I asked him, Jesus, if I could keep you warm, will that be a good enough gift? And Jesus told me, if you keep me warm, that will be the best gift anybody ever gave me. So I got into the manger, and then Jesus looked at me and told me I could stay with him always. And as little Misha finished the story, his eyes brimmed full of tears that splashed down his little cheeks. And he put his hand over his face, and his head dropped to the table, and his shoulders shook. And he sobbed. And the little orphan had found someone who would never abandon or abuse him. Someone who would stay with him for always. You know, we call Jesus Emmanuel, which means God is with us. In this Advent season, we discover, like the little orphan Misha, that the God who came in Jesus Christ will never abandon or abuse us, but will stay with us for always. Jesus promises to be with us when the cancer biopsy comes back positive instead of negative, when the final exam is marked with an F rather than an A, when the spouse of 15 years stops out the door and doesn't return. When the dream of success in business is once again downsized and diminished. When the late night long distance call communicates a death, not a birth. When the longing for family harmony is shattered by a shouting match. When the desire for companionship is drained by another lonely holiday season. In all these discouraging and disillusioning situations, our Lord is with us as Emmanuel, God with us. We're never completely without companionship or support as long as there are two babies in the manger. So why don't we do a very good job of keeping Jesus warm? What is it that threatens to separate us from Christ's child these days? Well, part of the problem is blindness. We simply don't see the manger. What one commentator recently called our hedonistic racetrack for comfort and joy this Christmas, we look for lasting pleasure in all the wrong places. We look for them in clubs, parties, and programs, and internet chat rooms. Surely there is certainly some good to be found in these gatherings, but they also distract us from the one place we can find unconditional acceptance and unending peace in the manger. It is only in a close relationship with Jesus Christ that we discover how truly valuable we are as children of God. Now, there's another problem, too, we all have, and that's our incessant busyness. I confess. I'm busy, too. Do we have time for the manger? You might remind me that our days are given, driven by parties and school concerts, and church events, and shopping excursions, 
not to mention the cultural requirements of holiday decorating, Christmas card writing, gift exchanges. It's kind of ironic, isn't it, that the escalating demands of Advent prevent us from taking time to focus on the reason for the season. So each of, each of us <clears throat> should carve out an evening this week just to slow down and rest. Slow down and rest. Pretend that the Christ child has been born this day in your particular house. We're crying you to simply stay home and to keep him warm. Now in addition, we face the challenge of doubt. Some folks have ceased to believe in the manger. You know, I recently, they say so much about millennials. This is the group that's coming up in the next generation. And I asked this couple what they were doing on Christmas Eve. Well, they looked at me and they said they were going to a club because, quote, unquote, they were not religious people on Christmas Eve. What chance does a baby in a manger have against the pull of entertainment, the fear of violence everywhere, of suicide bombers on subways, of serial killers in theaters, and even oh, in some of our churches? It's not a fair fight. And yet, I am here to tell you that in 30 years of ministry, no single life has changed the world more than the life of the Bethlehem boy. A life that challenges people to look beyond this world to the kingdom of God. There's always room for another baby in the manger. We are on a journey this Advent to Bethlehem. We're there to find the one who will stay with us on our journey, guide us towards an everlasting kingdom marked by love and peace and justice. If we give this baby comfort and support, we will find true comfort and support for ourselves as well. And we will testify to his light. So, do you feel challenged this Advent, like John, to spread justice in your home? To tell the world about what God is up to? To testify the presence of Christ in your life? That's what little Misha did when he put two babies in the manger. Just as surely as John the Baptist baptized in the Jordan River. John came as a witness to testify to the light of Christ, and so did little Misha, whether he knew it or not. And in our living, so do we. This was John's function, and that only, to testify to Jesus, the one true light, and it's ours as well. To the glory of God. Amen. Amen.